Yo, what's up YouTube? Today we're going to be painting some Blood Angels and I'm going to show you how to achieve this fantastic red armour. When you've got a chapter that's this iconic, that's this noticeable and frankly this powerful, you're going to see it a lot on the tournament tables and so on. So let's find a way to make your stand out from everybody else's with this beautiful, bright, vivid and powerful red. Let's get to it. So I started off by priming a miniature black. I want to make sure that we've got some really nice dynamic shadows on this thing. And then we're going to take a mixture of Thramar Black, Kador Red Base, and Flow Improvement. Now, that's a one part black, four parts red, and then an equal amount of Flow Improvement to the paint that you're using mix. You want to do this so you've got a solid base coat over the entire thing of a very, very dark red. At the end of the day, we want this red to be super powerful, and the way to do that is to use red throughout every single element of what we're doing. Once you've got a solid base coat of that everywhere, we're going to start getting the highlights down. And throughout the highlight process, I'm going to explain to you why I highlight things the way that I do with the airbrush. First off though, we've got to get some paint. So in the airbrush, I've left the dregs of that last bit of paint. We're now going to add some Flow Improver and an equal amount of Kador Red Base to this because we want to keep that nice, smooth gradient going through. And doing things like this will help that out. So you can see we've got a red that's not too dissimilar from our initial red. Obviously much brighter, a bit more power to it. And we're going to speed through the rest of, of this part of the miniature. I'm just going to amp up the video uh, so you can see what's going on while I explain to you how I highlight a Space Marine. Now the first thing to do is you need to work out where you're going to put the highlights. If you take a view of the miniature from four sides, so front on, both sides, and obviously the back, then highlight the nearest part of that miniature to you from each of those facings. If we were just doing a diorama miniature or something that you're only going to see from one side, you wouldn't have to worry about this. But because our mini is going to be on the tabletop, kicking ass and taking names, we need to be sure that they look good from all of those angles. So that's rule one. Rule two is if there is part of the miniature that is below the waist, you would generally highlight towards the bottom of the miniature. So on the greaves here, we're highlighting towards the ankle. We're highlighting obviously the top of the foot because you can't highlight the bottom of it, it's hidden. And there are a few other elements like that, for instance, the ankle protector that you have to do that way. If the miniature, uh, sorry, if the area on the miniature you're highlighting is above the waist, then you highlight the top part of that area. And again, there are a couple of things that you wouldn't do this way. For instance, the pectoral muscles are one of them. If you've got questions, come and tune in on Twitch. I'm live four days a week, three nights and one day. You can find me on Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday nights from 9 p.m. UK time. You can find me on Saturday daytimes from 11 a.m. We do giveaways, we have some really crazy long streams as well, it's a lot of fun and like I said you can get your questions answered in real time. We've also got a Patreon and I'd like to thank the following people who have subscribed to my Patreon recently. James Stewart Wilde, It's Me Skeptic, Hoju Silver, Adam Sadler, Aaron Cronin, Anthony Hernandez and Liam Back. Thank you very much guys, it's because of people like yourself that I'm able to do this as a full time job, I really really appreciate it, you're all bosses now i'm not going to lie to you we've got to this stage with our red and there's not a lot of difference but this is an important step we need our gradient from the base color to our final highlight color that transition between the two to be smooth and that's why we've done it now what we've done is we've cleaned our airbrush out had to dismantle it and things like that just give it a quick white round and the flush through we've got just Kador red base and we've got flow improving an even mix. We go back in, we're gonna hit all of the same elements of the miniature that we just have with our previous highlight. And you can see already just how powerful that red has become. On the shield is a clear example of how we do our highlights. On the top half of the shield, it's above the waist. We'll hit the top part. On the bottom half of the shield, it's below. We'll hit the bottom part. And the reason we do things like this is we get massive amounts of separation and it helps to enhance the amount of attention that our miniature is getting. When we put this guy on maybe a scenic base or something, we want all of it to sort of mesh together. We want the audience, the people that are looking at our miniature to be looking at our miniature and not just looking at like nothing in particular. 
So here's a good way of enhancing those focal points. On the face of the mini, as you can see here, we're coming close with that highlight and we're hitting it right front in the middle of the face, around that kind of V shape of the, uh, the brow line and the spiky point to his faceplate. Things like the shoulders, we highlight at the top, as well as, of course, those shoulder pad rims. And the backpack is actually a super important part of the Marine. It can look really, really boring and dull because there's no real detail on it. Admittedly, this guy's got an iron halo, but most Marines don't. What you need to do is come with this highlight and just hit both of those two uh, side vents and then that top panel in the middle there. Do the same on the back, obviously. And then when you get further down, the backpack, we're going to treat this as if it was a full miniature with the divide being around the middle of that sort of X-Men symbol. So we're going to highlight the top part of it now, and then we need to go right down to the bottom of the backpack and highlight that little V underneath there to give us a nice set of separation, give us something that stands out, because when this guy's charging around the battlefield, normally we're looking at his ass, and frankly, I'd like that to at least look interesting when it's my minis on the table. He's also set us up nicely for some brushed highlights, which we'll get to in a minute. There is one very important step we need to do first though, and that is a recess shade, a pin wash, panel lining, whatever you want to call it. Because of the way that I paint, where I use minimal brushed highlights, this is a super, super important step. If you don't do this, you lose a lot of detail on the miniature, which you would only get back by hitting those highlights. Now the highlight air, uh, sort of section of the paint job is one of the most critical and one of the most crucial to get the right control of your brush because if you mess up with the highlights, well, you're either looking at adding in some free battle damage or you're looking at having to do something like uh, a complete sort of brush over to, to eliminate what you've been painting. Because of that, I'd rather put on less highlights, have less stress, but go through all of the time it takes to do all of these recess shades, which is a far easier uh, element to paint to give me the same effect by the end of it. It also, and this is extremely crucial, because we're using less highlights that are gonna have a brighter tone than the rest of the armor, it stops us having a big color change. Spoilers for moving ahead, but we're gonna be using a mixture of red and yellow for our highlights. What we don't wanna have happen is this beautiful, rich, vibrant red that we've got to end up looking orange, therefore, giving our marine the overall impression of being orange. We want the red to be powerful, we want the red to be what you're really looking at on the miniature, and so by adding in all of those recess shades, encapsulating all of that detail, and you can see it now, you're gonna be able to put on less highlights, have less stress, and do that step much quicker than you would otherwise normally do it, and you're also gonna retain the power of the colors that you've put through with the airbrush. Hopefully you all got that. Let's move on to those highlights we were just talking about. So we've got a map of where to put these highlights and they're obviously based on where our airbrushed highlights were. So obviously we have to highlight the top of the foot, but using the same logic that we did before, we're highlighting towards the bottom of the armor panels below the waist and then the top of the armor panels above the waist. There are, of course, like we said earlier on, those little exceptions, the toe cap being one of them, that little ball uh, ankle joint and so on being another, but you're pretty okay at sort of spotting these things after you've done this once or twice, I'm sure. And as you can see, we're getting these highlights down, we're making sure that we've got them in nice and tight, and one of the best ways to do that is by ensuring your paint is the right consistency. Everyone will tell you this is about brush control, and this is a big part of brush control, is making sure your paint is right. If you're not set up for success, then you're obviously gonna have a bad time. When you're looking at your paint consistency, you wanna dip your brush into the paint and have it easily pick up the paint. You don't be sort of scooping that paint up. If you're scooping it up, it's too thick. If, however, at the opposite end of the scale, you dip your brush in the paint and it picks up all of the paint and changes the shape of the bristles away from the nice tip that I've got here to something that looks a little bit more like a chisel or the, like the other end of your paintbrush, then your paint is too thin and you need to reduce that uh, amount of water a little bit. Your paint needs to be the right consistency to give you the brush control needed to do these highlights. And anyone that has issues with the highlights going on a little bit wavy um, 
or just not having enough punch, it's normally because your paint is either too thick in the first example or too thin in the second example. Another reason to have this highlight uh, consistency absolutely spot on is that it flows off your brush easily. You only have to do one pass each time you're doing a highlight. And you can see on the, the helmet here, where we're picking out all those edges, that that's the case. You know, Put down one brush stroke, we're done, moving on. This makes all of this much, much, much more simple. And you can see on the helmet here where we're helping to enhance one of the focal points on our miniatures. We're getting all of those lines drawing in to essentially what would be his nose, but because he's wearing a helmet, of course, it's that nice sharp point in the middle. It really focuses the attention on this miniature's face. And that's one of the most important focal points on any miniature. You can also see how we're getting that massive sense of contrast between our shadows and our highlights by just outlining some of the uh, the mohawk area uh, on his helmet there. Because we put those pin washes in, we're getting all that detail. We can go on with a small but effective highlight to really just bring all that to life and make all of our shadows much more dynamic as a consequence. Now, it's one area that we haven't highlighted yet at all, and that is the backpack. And I said earlier on how important this is, so I'm going to show you the whole thing sped up in full. You can see we've got a nice little V at the back there. We've underlined each of those vents. And on these outside vents, we're taking our view from just the back of the miniature. We're highlighting the areas of each armor panel are nearest to us, like we said. And if it's above the middle, we do the top. If it's below the middle, we do the bottom. So that outlines the V at the bottom of it. It helps you show the uh, detail on this sort of X-Man symbol we've got here. There are a couple of deviations from it. For instance, on the, uh, the vents, we'll do the bottom part of that. And again, on the, uh, the top section, we'll highlight towards the bottom of there to get that separation. But it's a really good way of giving yourself some interest to this area of the model, which is the bit that you're going to see more often than not. Now, we're going to round out the video here after showing you how to do the armor. You can use the same techniques that you've seen here, but with different colors to present any chapter that you want to on the tabletop. We just happen to be showing you it with a Blood Angel. Obviously, it's also a really good way of painting red. If you want to see how we did all of the other elements of the armor, the shield, the power swords, all of the gold, the uh, like material, like leather and the cloth and everything else, then tune in on Patreon next Friday. We will see that video. I'm going to guide you through all of the steps to get these guys looking absolutely phenomenal on the tabletop, including, of course, those transfers up to exactly how you see them right now. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Like, comment, subscribe. I'd love to hear your feedback on everything we've done here. Hopefully, we'll see you guys in the streams. If not, we'll catch you in the next one. Peace out.